Well, it's finally here, the end of Cheltenham Festival Week, but what a week it's been. David Orr, delighted to be joined by Time Form Chase handicapper Phil Turner and Ben Linfoot to look back on some of the action over the four days at Presby Park. And we're now talking about 30 minutes or so after probably the highlight. We saw the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup and history made. It's Rachel Blackmore becoming the first female rider to win the great race on Aplutard. And... Phil, watching the replay now, this moment turning in, there was just a stride or two. She looked to be in trouble. Yeah, she got slightly caught for him in last year's renewal and you wonder whether history was going to repeat itself. But she's, uh, she remained very cool and uh, she had the horse to get her out of trouble in a sense. And uh, she didn't panic uh, and there was no doubt when, once we got to the running. And Ben, we've been saying all the way through the build-up, what an open race, a really open Gold Cup. To kind of phrase, oft used by one of our leading con uh, commentators, Abelutard was much the best. Oh yeah, he was. And uh, all the talk pre-festival was probably about the Energumin v Shishkin rematch, wasn't it? But this was the rematch that really delivered Manella Indo versus Abelutard. And it was uh, a very easy reversal of, of last year's 1-2. The same two finishing uh, for Henry de Bromhead uh, in, the, in the Gold Cup gold and silver medal winner positions but Aplutard such a, an easy winner really that, and it didn't look likely did it even at the last fence that he was going to run away by 15 lengths. I mean what a week it's been for the, for the Irish trainers again I mean we came into Friday's action I thought Britain could produce one of the greatest sporting upsets of all time in the Presbury Cup it wasn't to be but we've got William Mullins top trainer with a record breaking total and Henry de Bromhead who has had such a troubled winter so many problems he's now won the uh, champion of the gold Cup in two successive seasons. That, that's a remarkable feat, Phil. It is a remarkable feat and uh, look, all the headlines are naturally going to be about Rachel Blackmore and we understand that she's, she's great for the sport, she's very, very popular but Henry de Bromhead is a big, big part of the story and I mean, the other thing about today's Gold Cup is there's a really good horse there as well so it's, a, it's sort of the perfect storm really for the racing purists but uh, yeah, no, it shouldn't be forgotten, you know, the horse trainer to train Champion Hill and Gold Cup doubles, that you know, there aren't that many in history and uh, he deserves to do it back to back for two years is a, is a stellar achievement. Yeah, some achievement. Keep your eyes peeled on Sport and I for the full time from verdict on that absolute type performance. Now, the, the numbers are in for Honeysuckle. Ben, she won the Unibet Champion Hurdle for the second successive season on Tuesday under Rachel with a performance we're about to see on the screens. I thought it was arguably more impressive than 12 months previously. Yeah, she she did what she always does, didn't she? And put the race to bed between the second last and the last with that sort of devastating burst of speed, that turn of foot that just singles her out in this division. Um, she's been much the best for the last couple of years, hasn't she? She's racked up 10 grade ones in a row, uh, a couple of champion hurdles in a row now, beating a previous champion hurdle winner there in, in Epiton. And um, I I'm sure Phil's going to come on to crunching the numbers and what she has actually achieved in, in the context and when you're comparing it with the likes of up and coming hurdles like Constitution Hill as well. But she has wrapped up a winning sequence because she's the best in the division. Uh, and she, she keeps beating on new rivals, you know, appreciate it was in there. Uh, you know, he won the Scabbit Supreme last year by, what was it, 24 lengths? And okay, the, the ground probably got a bit quick for him and he was returning after a year off the track, etc, etc. But it's another fresh face, another new rival that she swatted away. And it's hard to keep winning like she does and she's she's a fantastic race mare one of the all-time great jumping mares phil but every party needs a party poop and it's your guy's job to put a number on it we're now going to look at the highest rated or the highest time formations of champion hurdle winners multiple. over the years multiple winners yeah. over the years these are some of the biggest names in jumps racing and i'm looking at the first six there and i can't see the name honeysuckle no she's not and i think we'll possibly have to scroll down to the next page because she she does feature at the bottom look with all of these the first thing we need to flag up is the seven pound allowance. If you add the seven pound allowance to a figure, then there's a bit more sort of mid-table respectability. Um, she comes up sort of around where see you then or hurricane fly might be if you add that seven pound into it. Um, ben just said she's the, you know, the best of the lot at the minute. She's by far the best of the lot. She's, she's I think her, her racing going into the, uh, Tuesday's race, there was a bigger gap between her at the top and the second top than any other uh, on time for ratings than any other race at the meeting. So 
you know, we do race it, don't get me wrong. Well, I'm looking at 165 yeah. plus, so that signifies you think there might be more to come under the bonnet. Or is it, is it a plus, is it my it's eyesight? An it's an asterisk to denote the, uh, the, the mayor's allowance. Oh, well, there you go, that's my eyesight. Yeah. I am having them tested <laughs> on Tuesday. So 165, that can't be converted into the, the 182, I think was all for, for night nurse. But give us a con, how good would a 165 champion hurdler be in a, a normal era? Well, no, it's, as I say, if, you, if, you, if you're adding the seven pounds to it, she's into the low 170s, yeah, and that's, that's an up to scratch really good champion yeah um she's if it's just bare on the 165 then she's quite low down on not just multiple champions all-time champions but that's far more we're dealing numbers that's far more reflection on the opposition than honey sucker herself she can only beat what's in front of her and it just we just ha happen to be in, a, in an era where most of sort of the big spending uh, jumping connections they're tending to sort of buy jumping stock and they're being fast tracked to chasing um, if you think of one horse who was missing from this year's champion was Sharjah, who um, has been run up in the previous two renewals of the champion hurdles, won a host of grade ones in, in Ireland and is a, been a magnificent servant. But he's, he's probably not in the top 10, let alone the top 15, you know, ranked horses in Willie Mullins' yard. It's just that most of the ones above him have been sent chasing. And the other thing to throw into the factor is that there's, there's a lot less of the sort of top end flat horses who are, who are coming into the uh, jumping ranks probably in the last 20 years rise of the all weather and obviously big spenders in australia and in the middle east are going they're going there those horses aren't turning up in in um in sort of uh in, in jumping stables nowadays and they were often being turned into top two mile herders so it's it's just a slightly weaker division than it has been in previous years it may change you know you, you know gigging sounds you know, tends to be leaving the sport the next huge spending owners they, they might be more geared towards hurdling than chasing. You just don't know. But I think that's, that's one of the main reasons why it's just a slightly weaker division. But that's, that's no slight on Honeysuckle. And uh, the big, we deal in numbers, the big number to go with her is that she's 15 not out. 15 not out. And that's yeah. a phenomenal achievement. Now, there's a big number to come now because we started with a bang bell in the Sky Bet. Supreme Novices Hurdle, a build up as one of the races of the week, and in Constitution Hill, we got a winner of the ages. Brilliant performance, and a horse who earned a time form rating that made him the highest rated novice hurdler in time forms history. That, that's some achievement on your third run under rules. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And what he did, you know, there was gasps in the winner's enclosure when, the, you know, the time came through, uh, as if to say, well, that, that must be wrong. You know, because how can he do that? Uh, and people were thinking, well, is the ground good to firm? You know, what, what's going on here? But the, the, the best aspect of the performance was they went such a fast pace and he was just cruising, wasn't he? Just tanking uh, in behind off it. And what he did in the straight um, was just phenomenal. He was, he was gun barrel straight. He was hurdling technique was superb. It was, just, it was flawless, really. Perfect performance. And... The time backs it up and what we've got to think now with Constitution Hill is can he do it again? Can he repeat it? Can he improve even in open company? And it's a fascinating prospect and what Phil's saying there about horses coming through and owners and going chasing, he's quite, he's fairly short in the 2023 20, Sporting Life Arkle market, he's pretty short in the Champion Hurdle market as well. Please please keep him over hurdles. It would be great to see him against Honeysuckle. For Honeysuckle as well, to give her the chance to, to you know, improve that 165 figure, possibly running against a better company, but he's, he's, he's a brilliant prospect. And Phil, looking at that graphic on the screen right now, she would have to improve that 165 number. Well, she would. Uh, look, I guess if you're going to sort of play devil's advocate, you would say that the Supreme, it was set up for a huge figure. It's a bit like, I don't know if old athletics fans, Steve Cohen, um, uh, so Sebco and Steve Ovet used to sort of trade world records regularly and they'd have those races were set up they'd have two or three pacemakers who would lead them around lap by lap and then they'd come through and that's what kind of happened with Dysart Dynamo and John Bond with, unwittingly were acting as elite pacemakers for uh, Constitution Hill the thing about Honeysuckle bringing up that huge unbeaten uh, record she's done it in races all types of races all types of paces to them she's found a way to win them yeah right he's got to prove that he can do that in a different scenario to what he's had so far but you know, boy, he did it. You've still got to be a, have a massive engine to run to sort of the figure on the clock he did that day. And um, no, look, were they, you know, match bet between the pair? I'd be side of in Constitution at the minute, and that's no slight on Honeysuckle. It's just that it was so good on Tuesday, and I think that's the way you got to go. Let's hope it happens. We might even get it this season. Michael Buckley was talking yeah. about pointing to the Punchestown Champion Hurdle with Constitution Hill, and he'd meet Honeysuckle there, all, all being well. But 
It's been a week of monster performances in one way or another. And Willie Mullins, I mean, it's not been the best of week until Friday and then he took hold, but he'd already made history. He had one race missing from his Cheltenham CV, Ben, and on Wednesday in the Betway Queen with the Champion Chase, he got it with a Nergamines uh, performance. It wasn't the class we expected. Shishkin pulled up early doors, and this was him dominant at the finishing end of the race. Yeah, not for the first time. The, the champion chase fell apart a bit, didn't it? With obviously Shishkin being pulled up, Shaq and Passoir falling six from home. And uh, there was three highly rated monsters going into the race. Those two and Anergamine. And in the end, Anergamine's run away from them um, in, in really good style. I thought it was fascinating that Paul Townend decided to change tactics on him. Uh, I think everyone expected him to bowl out in front on Anergamine and try and run the sting um, out of the race. But, uh, you know, he, he held him up from an early stage, tracking Shishkin, trying something different to beat him. And uh, it was impressive how well Anergamine settled in that scenario. You know, he, he's been a bit of a puller in the past, but he settled really well and proved that he can do it in different ways, different ground. And uh, he's, uh, he's a fast, fantastic two-mile chaser. And what an you know, achievement for Willie Mullins, completing the Cheltenham set, if you like. It's almost as if they did think they had a chance of beating Shishkin and had indeed been working on a change of tactics at home in between the Clarence House and the champion chase. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Now, we're going to talk about the big chase soon, but let's watch another video. Um, Alaho winning the Ryanair chase for the second successive season. It's a race that's got its knockers, Phil, this intermediate trip, but it, it's a division that this horse has completely dominated now for the last two seasons. Oh, he, he really is. The sort of that intermediate trip, it just it suits his freewheeling style down to the ground and he's... Um, I guess last year's race was so stunning, uh, nothing was ever going to match that. But to be honest, I, I thought he was just as good yesterday. Um, bar a sort of slight mistake at the last, his jumping was just impeccable again. And look, he's just, he's a monster under those type of conditions. I guess it's a shame, you know, why isn't he taking on the sort of, I'd like to have seen him up against the Nergamine and, or even up against Aplutar. That's not going to happen given the ownership, but it's... Um, uh, but no, he, he's a wonderful horse and let's just hope something can come along and, and sort of give him a proper race. Let's have a look at the racing, Time Farm's top rated chasers. And w w you're looking at it now, horses are over the 180 mark, that, that's not common is it? Phil? No. That's a rarity. To be honest, over the 175 mark is, is, is pretty rare. So, you know, to have so many of them in that sort of bracket at the minute, it's a, it's a sort of rich period. And the really frightening thing is that four of them are all in the same stable. I mean, that is sad. We think back to my Halcyon days and Michael Dickinson in the first five in the Gold Cup and I thought, yeah. well, that will never happen again. All of a sudden, there's a, a flashing light that he could have six out of the seven one year or something. I guess it does happen. You think back to sort of, I mean, Michael Dickinson, I don't think he ever had more than sort of 55 horses in his yard and, and he had embarrassment to riches then. You go back to the days of Tom Draper and Arkham Flying Bolts, I think he only had 40 horses in the yard. Fred Winter had all those stable stars in the 70s uh, and then Corto Star and Denman were in the boxes next to each other at Paul Nichols. So I guess it, it does happen, it's happened from time from time uh, throughout history that, you know, you do get sort of a concentration of talent in certain top yards and it is frightening the strength of depth he's got. Ben, we need to backtrack to the Sport Life Arkle on the Tuesday, the opening race, opening day of the festival. Edward Stone won for Alan King, hugely popular winner for the, for the uh, trader who'd gone so long without one at the festival and a thoroughly professional performance as you expect from this horse now. Yeah, it was a professional performance. Uh, five from five over fences now since being uh, brought down uh, on his first go this season. And uh, he's just learning with experience, isn't he? A really good economical jumper, powerful at the finish, everything you want really in a two mile chaser. Um, I think this division wasn't the strongest this year, was it? When you look at Fernie Hollow getting injured um, ahead of the Sporting Life Arkle. But you can't take anything away from Edward Stone. Much the best on the day. Um, really interesting to see how he goes next season. Uh, when you look at Alan King's last couple of Arkle winners, he had Viper Estades, who went on to win the champion chase the following year. And he had My World Solzen, who, who never won another race under rules, I don't think. I think Edward Stone is definitely going to be more Viper than My Way. Um, but it's a pretty tough division, isn't it, when you've got a Nergamine, Shishkin, Shaq and Possois still, uh, and potentially Fernie Hollow coming back. Um, it'll be tough for him to break through in open company, but um, really interested to see how he goes. We need to talk novice chasers. The elephant in the room here, there was one performance of the week from a horse who didn't even complete the course, and he's uh. crept onto that top-rated chasers graphic at number five. He's going to be on this time from top novice chasers graphic as well, Phil. Spoiler alert, Galapin Deschamps. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, he's been 
he's just looked magnificent on all, all three chase starts so far. Look, yesterday's race is a tricky one to rate because um, there's always the suspicion that Bob Ollinger wasn't at his absolute very best for whatever reason. But I'm leaning towards the fact that he possibly be just bumped into a monster. I think I, I said to someone earlier, if, if you stop the race five out and ask Bob Ollinger backers were they happy they'd have been perfectly happy at that stage and he just he just put the pressure on Paul Turner I felt so sorry for him because he was getting some great leaps out of him putting the pressure on the horse chasing him stalking him and just ran away from him in the straight and look we we've, we've taken that actually could be a conservative rate we've taken on him there because we've kind of rated it around the, the gap between them at the last given the way he seemed to be pulling away and how tired Bob Ollinger got it could have been much bigger than that, but you know, it's I say it's it's a tricky race to rate, but we're clearly dealing with something out out of the ordinary. And Ben, that was the feeling we were, you were left gasping. Why? What happened after the final fence when he, he stumbled and came down? But up till that point, it felt like you were seeing something a little bit special there. It, it was a, an extraordinary performance in many ways. I think one of the aspects was the first couple of fences. He really gave those some air. Yeah. And. Um, Willie Mullins said afterwards that he was a little bit worried that he wouldn't have anything left in the tank for the end of the race, but that was very much not the case because when he turned the screw, he just went away again and it was going to be a monstrous performance and it was such an unlucky fall. Yeah. There was no bad technique about it. He just slipped a little, didn't he, after the last and really unlucky, but the good thing is he got up, he walked away unscathed and Willie Mullins has got a, a serious tool on his hands there for the future. A line fell on long press, eh? winner of the Brown Advisory? Probably similar to Edberstone in the fact he's he's been wonderful all season and it's a shame that they're almost overshadowed by Gallop and Deschamps. We could say the same about horses like Vauban or, or Sir, Sir Gerhard because Gallop and Deschamps for me was the same as Constitution Hill in terms of like wow factor and there's plenty of really, really good horses that won at this meeting as well and they're going to be slightly overshadowed by it. What a week. Unfair question. I haven't prepped you for this. This one on the running order. I'm going to ask you for your moment of the week to wrap us up. Ben, I'll let you go first. When you look back on Cheltenham 2022, what's going to be the moment of the week? Wow. Um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it is a tough one that day. I, I, I look back at even the cross country and seeing Tiger Roll nearly win a six festival race. Um, fantastic little horse just beaten by Delta Work in the driving rain. That was a big moment. Um, honeysuckle, I think, you know, winning her 50. You've got one. I don't, I don't want your top three. I want your one moment of the week. Well, I'll go with. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to go with Honeysuckle, Dave, because, you know, 15 in a row, second champion hurdle, she's unbeaten. Um, I think in, when you look at all those championship races, the champion chase fell apart a bit. Uh, Florian Potter was good again from the front, but she was she's special in the champion hurdle, uh, so I'll go with her. Phil? Like Ben, there are so many to choose from. I think it was a tie between Constitution Hill and Caliban de Champ. Because Constitution Hill stayed on his feet, I'll give it to him. It seems an awfully long time ago now, first, race on, the, first race on the Tuesday, but... Yeah, if I could bottle that feeling after you cross the line, I think that's the, that was the moment for me. And I'm guilty of recency bias here, but I'm going to go with that Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup. Nap Lutard and Rachel Blackmore, historic winner, and I love to see a brilliant winner of a Gold Cup. I love to see a staying chaser with a bit of speed and a bit of zip, and on that ground on Friday, Nap Lutard had that and was a brilliant winner. Thanks to Phil, thanks to Ben, thanks for watching us all week here at SportingLife.com. It's been a fantastic Cheltenham Festival, and we'll be back building up to all the big races next week.